In this part of the series, I will show you how I texture painted the industrial lamp. I will be using Substance Painter. So the first thing I do, I will select the base and rename it to industrial lamp underscore base. Then I will select the circle, rename it to industrial lamp underscore cage and will rename all the other parts appropriately. So industrial lamp underscore lamp industrial lamp underscore connector and industrial lamp underscore glass. Now because the lamp and the connector do not have any UV maps, we do not need them. We can hide them, select everything else and click on file, export, wavefront or obg and then go to the part where you want to export it. Here we'll just call this industrial lamp. Be sure to click on selected only, so only those objects that you've selected will be exported and everything else is fine. After I've exported it, I will open up Substance Painter. Now that I've opened Substance Painter, I will click on File, New and select the mesh here industrial lamp and all the other settings are fine how they are. I click on OK and here it is our industrial lamp imported into Substance Painter. You will notice that if you look in from the top everything is transparent. This is because of the back face culling. If you see them anywhere else except on the top there you have some bad normals and you would need to recalculate them. So, first thing I do, I will go up here and select industrial lamp base. My layout will definitely look different from yours because I've customized mine. So, I will take a smart material as a little reference point for us. And this one looks all right. Take it and drag it over to here. And you can notice it looks off, not like it should. This is because smart materials require to have some special maps, like the curvature maps, ambient occlusion maps, sometimes even normal maps. We do not have a high poly mesh, but this is not an issue for us. We can go ahead and click on bake mesh maps. Deselect the ones that we don't need, for example, thickness, position, ID, world space normal and normal normal. And under high definition maps, we will just select our industrial lamp. That's pretty much it. We just need ambient occlusion and curvature. If we now click on bake selected textures, we will quickly bake them. And you can see now it works fine. For ambient occlusion and curvature, you do not need to have the high poly meshes. So you can be fine with just them having itself, basically. So, worked like a charm. Alright, now we will select another material, put it on this part. We will repaint it later on and have it something more like how we want it. This is just a base reference so we see what exactly we are working with, instead of everything being white. Personal preference. Selecting the glass and under layers, we can delete the base paint layer and add a fill layer. Now, glass is transparent, which means we have to go to the channels and add an opacity channel. This is what Substance Painter uses for its glass materials. Now, if we select the fill layer and go to its properties, we have to enable OP, opacity. And if we now slide down the opacity slider, we notice nothing happens. This is because our shader by default is set to the metallic workflow instead of the metallic alpha blend workflow. So what we're gonna do is go up there under window, views, shader settings. Now there it opened, here. You can see metal rough. We go ahead, click on it and select metal rough with alpha blending. We click on it. Need some time to cal calculate and then we can reduce the opacity and you can see 
it goes transparent. Just the way you want it. Great. So I'll reduce it to be something like that. That looks fine to me. I close the shader settings again. And let's take a look. Maybe change the color a bit to more, to more of a yellowish stained dirty lamp like that. Yeah, that looks fine to me. Now on the texture settings, everything is fine. The resolution is fairly high, but I, yeah, it's fairly high. Let's set it to some, no, it's okay. It's okay. Now we can add some dirt to it. Let's go ahead and take our materials and then just select something that looks like dirt. Maybe that looks like dirt, like dust, mud, stains. If you do not have these materials, because I've downloaded them from Substance Share, it's their website where they share stuff for free. I use it, it's very nice. You have some awesome user made materials there. And yeah. So when we select it, you have some parameters here. You see that the opacity, height, normal, and all of that. I like to enable height and opacity. And now I also need to change it from a UV projection to triplanar projection. This will change the way it's projected and allows me to have rather seamless cuts instead of having a seam. Uh, something like that, a little bit scaling it down so it is more dense. Awesome. So let's take a look now. Now that is all fine. We will create a black mask. Now with this black mask, we will go ahead and select the brushes. Something like dirt spots, that seems nice. Maybe, ah, ah that looks like dirt. It's a nice dirty texture. Increase the size a bit. Reduce the flow, maybe a bit higher size. And just start painting away. Try to imagine how dirt will fall onto this. You don't need anything super precise calculated, just some splashes of dirt. Maybe someone dropped something heavy and it wound up a bit of dust. Yeah. All right, something like that. Maybe here a bit more. Yeah. Looks fine to me. Now let's add something like rust from the, from the metallic parts, something like rust dripped over to it. So we just drag and drop a bit of rust, enable normal and opacity, go to the black mask and maybe reduce the flow a bit more, reduce the size a bit more and just draw in some rust. From up there some rust maybe dribbled down onto it and stained the glass, just widely painting over it. Should do the trick just fine. Yep. Maybe drop down here a bit more. I like that, just dribbled. Mm. Just play around with the settings for something that you like. And just like that. Here a bit. Yeah. If you painted it a bit too strong, like in my case, in my opinion, uh, you can go ahead and down there in the paint settings, you can set it to black and it will subtract it. Then you can just subtract it off the mesh or the texture rather to a point that you like. Oh, that's more like it. Great. Now. Those industrial lamps usually have a net or like some sort of way that the light is diffused so it does not have just this glaring object in the middle. What we can do there is just be a bit creative. For example, let's take this thing, the diamond, what's it called, how do you call it, diamond armor, iron diamond armor. And as you can see, it gives you a weird pattern. So we set it to triplanar projection and if we scale it up, you can barely see it. So 
you can just hide the fill layers this so it's easier for you to see and to, uh, enable the normal enable the opacity no never mind you don't need the opacity you don't need the roughness neither do you need the metal nor do you need the color you only want to have the height or the normal i prefer both and you can fiddle around a little bit to have them here intersect well with each other something like that but it does not look right this looks too scaly so what you can do is click on this little padlock and play around with this size so it is scaled up a lot just like that this will give it more of a widespread diffuser pattern instead of it being just some sort of net there enable all the others and you can see looks all right that looks fine looks how it should look like great now we can go to the other parts like the base add the material there be it the rust material and same game again black mask and paint some rust on that depending on how broken you want your lamp to be more rust or less rust just don't forget that you can always subtract it that's what i'm usually doing i just add a little bit too much of something there and then just remove it just like that send it a lot to me good 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 a bit more here no, just like that yes now setting it to black increasing the size reducing the flow and just painting over it a bit on the edges so it's a bit smoothed out like that yeah just like that a little bit nice I don't like the green color of this material because this is a smart material it is made up of many smaller materials so you can select here you can see the plastic in this case and you can play around with its color I want it to be more of a metallic look so I reduce the plastic reduce the brightness and increase the metallic maybe a bit brighter Increase the roughness. Yeah, that, that looks like a, that looks nice. Like some rusty lamp, maybe a bit too much rust. So we just start to remove a bit of rust again. Just like that. Great, great, great. Now I can add some other things like some coarse rust to have more of a rough look there. That's all the way you want it to be. That's a nice about that's a nice thing about art. You are the god. You can create and destroy what you want. So let's go and do the red thing down there. The cage, the red color does look off. So just change the paint. Maybe even completely remove the paint. Let it be some rustic metal. Increase the roughness, add some rust, even black mask, a bit more flow, we just paint over it. Because this is a mirrored material, all the texture that we paint here will be on the all other parts. So we have to paint just one quarter of the whole thing. Save time. And save time is always nice. All right, that's now looking pretty good. Now we can go and and check this out. This is far too dense of a textile density, so we go ahead and change this to 256, something like that. Very low because this is such a fine and dense thing. I don't think you would notice anything. I mean. 
it could be 128 honestly and you would notice yeah I think that would be fine now this one oh, let's, let's remove that this one the lamp base it looks too high resolution too let's reduce it a little bit it's fine I think the lamp can stay that way yep that's a very simple and rough way how to paint a little rusty industrial lamp. And now to export the textures, you click on File, Export Textures, and then you can select where to export them. I always have a little structure in my project, so I will export it to here. After we've set our path, we will go to the output template. And at the very top, we can see document channels plus normal plus AO with alpha. We will select that one. And that means that all of those channels will have mixed AO and normal DirectX. We don't need one. And we can also see that the glass has one additional one. It's the opacity. Great. Now we can uncheck those that we don't need and export it. The resolutions are fine as they are. Global settings perfect and export. So these are all the materials that we've just exported. The base, the glass and the cage. And how to make materials out of those to render in Blender we will see in the next video. Because I will be making it for multiple render engines we will have multiple dedicated videos for that. Beginning with cycles. And until then I hope you liked this, I hope you learned something and see you next time.